thank you everyone for joining me for Big Picture Organization and Task Management on my Mac. My name is Matt Caton and I'm joined today by my Mac colleague, Patrick Thompson. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. And um, it was a really, really great webinar that we have today, specifically because Patrick and I are both going to be presenting on our Macs. Um, we are both a bit of a hybrid. I guess I would, to be completely honest, I lean a little bit more Windows. I use Windows typically when I'm at the office, but I've got a Mac at home. And uh, Patrick, I know, uh, I think leans a little bit more Mac and has a window machine that he dabbles in from time to time. So uh, we've got perspective of approaching the brain from, from both angles, but we're specifically sharing with you today all of the Mac-specific features. Now, there aren't too many. The application, I should point out, is cross-platform compatible. So when you install the brain on your Mac or install it on another machine, on a, on a PC, the application is going to look very, very similar. But there are a few key differences that we'll be pointing out uh, through the demo today. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, I'm specifically going to start with the desktop application um, on the Mac. We're also going to be talking about using the Mac on your iOS devices, so your mobile devices, iPads and iPhones. But let's start here on the local machine. And once again, um, the application looks as if it does on when you were installing on a PC. When you go to our download page, there's options for you to download the PC installer or the Mac installer. So you can actually download the Mac installer from your PC machine if you'd like and send it on over to install later, whatever the case may be. But they are different installers. Once installed, the applications will look and behave the same. And let's walk through just basic use of the brain. The brain is information management at its best. Pieces of information in the brain are what we call thoughts. And clicking on a thought brings that thought into the center of the screen and displays all related information around it. And Mac note users are notorious for sort of thinking outside the box. And this is definitely organizing your information outside the box, outside the typical file and folder structure. Um, or directories that you would typically store information in. And a great example of that, if I click over into clients, and I'll go down to my clients through service level, I'm gonna go to my gold level service clients and click on Time Warner. And notice right away, the Time Warner falls under three different categories. We call the thoughts above the active thought, it's parent thoughts. So above Time Warner, my current active thought, I have gold level service clients category, um, clients by communication, and clients by media and entertainment. I could have clicked down through any step, any of those different categories. However, I'm thinking about my information. I can still find exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I clicked down through clients by service level, gold, and still was able to get to Time Warner. If this information were stored in a typical file and folder directory. Yes, you could have over in your directory on your Mac a, uh, a directory for my clients uh, broken down into subcategories. And if you go into gold level clients, there's Time Warner. But you wouldn't be able to see when you had that folder open that they're not only a gold level client, they're a communications client, media and entertainment. And maybe you need to be on the lookout for all media and entertainment to make them aware of a new a uh, program that's become available at your organization or a new product that you're going to be offering all of your clients. And you would have no way of knowing or seeing that information outside of the brain. Now, of course, you can make duplicates or shortcuts, but again, you can't visualize all of that information and get the big picture on your, on your company in those types of directories. So here I am in Time Warner, and below the active thought, we have what we call the child thoughts. And a child thought is really a subcategory of the current active thought. So now I can go down into some of my individual ad campaigns to look up some documents and information there. I've got individual files as well. We'll be talking about file attachments, launching file attachments, um, and associating them with thoughts in your brain. And of course, over to the left, we have something called a jump thought. 
And the jump thought, once again, is where we can break away from any type of hierarchical structure. Jump thought is something that's related to the act of thought, but doesn't necessarily fit into any type of, of hierarchy. So I'm going to pick on Vin. Vin's our uh, graphic artist. He's a manager at my organization, but he's working as the graphic artist for this Time Warner account. And I can see and clearly identify people's roles because I have set up what we call a link type. I've modified the link and named Fred as the account lead. Joe, I can visualize, is the engineer. And Vin is the graphic artist. So I can click and drag Vin down below Time Warner. He's not really a subcategory of Time Warner. He's got a lot of different job responsibilities. So this doesn't really fit into the, the structure or my sort of business application. He doesn't own Time Warner. So I don't have him linked up above as a parent thought. But he is closely related. So I like him linked over as a jump thought. And it's important to point out there that you can see I can modify and change the way thoughts and are related to one another at any time. If I accidentally create a child thought and think, well, that's more of a jump thought, I can simply click and drag to reorganize how that thought is linked to a thought within the brain. <clears throat> and creating and adding new thoughts is a very simple process. Let's go ahead now and create a new thought. I like to click and drag off of the gate to create a new thought. Now, there's different ways to create new thoughts. Let me hit the red X here. Notice I can right-click on the thought to create a new child. And here, again, are some specific keystrokes that are different on a Mac than on a PC. I think this is actually the first one that I'm pointing out. But notice on a Mac your default keystrokes. So I have a command down, um, command up, or command left. And uh, that is unique default on a Mac. On a PC, I believe they're F6, F, uh, F4, F5, and F6, something of that nature. So these are settings that you can modify. You can actually go into your properties. We'll go there in a little bit. And you can actually modify what your keystrokes are. But we've specifically designed Mac-friendly keystrokes as the defaults uh, for many of the processes within the brain. So I can uh, command down. So obviously the child thought below Time Warner, command down. Well, once again, I just did that on the keyboard and that gives me a new child thought. So I can create a child thought for my new ad campaign called See the World. And now everything that I am going to associate with this ad campaign for this client is going to be connected to this individual thought. So a couple of different ways that we can bring content into the brain. And I'd like to start out by sharing with you some of the most basic um, uh, options that we have. And then for more detailed and Mac specific options for file attachments and different cut type of content attachments, I'll be passing uh, things over to, uh, to Patrick. But first, let's start with just some existing documentation. So here I have, um, um, I actually have the Microsoft Office suite installed here. It's, it, it is what I like to use for word processing, even on the Mac. So I've got it installed, and I can simply drag and drop a, let's grab a Word document, this release outline. I'm just going to drag and drop that right into the brain. Now, it doesn't matter what type of file uh, or document that you have to drag and drop into the brain. If you use some type of Mac specific application and it's got a very unique type of file extension that comes along with it, whether you're visualizing your file extensions or not, you can drag and drop any type of individual file into the brain. And the brain is always going to launch that file in its native application. So what that means, and I talked a little bit at the very beginning about the brains being cross-platform compatible. You can install them on, the, on Windows. You can install them on the Mac. I can drag and drop Mac files right here into my brain, sync to the cloud, which we'll be talking about in a bit as well, and open that brain from my Windows machine as well. And Windows will do its best to read the file extension and open something that, uh, that will launch that particular file. Here we've got a doc, doc file. I do have Word installed, so that 
is what my Mac is going to, uh, oh, well, I'll just skip that. I don't have a couple of the fonts installed, so I'll skip those. But Mac is going to open up this specific attachment. Now, this was created in Word, so it adds some unique uh, fonts. I'm not too concerned about that. At least I have the text, the code examples that I'm looking for uh, for this release outline for this specific document. Now, the default to drag and drop into the brain is to create a shortcut back to the original. So you may have noticed here in that eSolutions directory that release outline still exists out there in that directory. I'm going to grab now an Excel spreadsheet. So here's a summer order um, that I want to bring into the brain. And here again is a bit of a unique difference between Mac and PC. I can actually hold down the Alt key. So I'm going to click on Alt on my keyboard and drag and drop this Excel. And the difference is very subtle. Now, if I were on a PC, I would have held down the Control key. On a Mac, you hold down the Alt key. But the difference is this original Word document that I drag, drag and dropped earlier was a shortcut. And I can see the little black arrow right there over the Word icon. And if I look at the Thought Tool tab for that thought, it tells me specifically particular document is located inside users, MKT and desktop eSolutions, etc. So by holding down the Alt key on my Mac, I've actually copied this particular file internally into my brain. The original is still there, so I can look back out at eSolutions. There's that summer order document. But this document I've copied by holding down the Alt key into the brain. Now there's another option that you have, and that is uh, done with Control Shift. That's the same on Mac and PC, Control Shift. This time I'm going to grab these sales figures, go back to see the world, and drag and drop sales figures right into the brain. Now also notice that every time I drag and drop below the active thought, it creates a new thought. That thought name is whatever the file name. It uses the file name to, to name the thought. But notice when I held down Control Shift, the sales figures was actually moved from its original look to the brain. So now I've moved this internally. It no longer resides in that directory. And you can actually set that up to be your default. If you go up into the brain and into your preferences, uh, I can click on the user interface tab, the UI tab, and I can make my default to actually move files into the brain or keep that with linked files into the brain. The choice is completely yours as far as which um, which action you want to do. And don't feel that you have to write down, oh, Alt, drag, and drop is a copy. Control, Shift, drag, and drop is, is uh, moving the file. You can always go back and here for this release outline, I'll simply right click and I can move or copy that file into the brain. And on an internal attachment, I can right click and I can, whoops, right click and I can move that file out of the brain. So once again, at any time, you can always go back and modify not only the thought structure of your brain, but how files are attached and, and associated with individual thoughts within your brain. So you can always go back and modify those. Now, the reason why we give you these options to either move files into the brain or copy files into the brain is obviously because no two environments are ever the same. You may be working on your intranet and you've got access to a shared drive that other colleagues have access to as well, and thus moving those files internally into your brain will uh, uh, remove their access. So a shortcut in that environment may work best. Whereas if you're on the road all the time, you're not always connected to your internet, let alone the web at, at all, an internal attachment might work best so you have those files with you wherever you go. Now it's also important to point out that files that are internal inside your brain, they're not renamed or compressed in any way. So I can do a spotlight here on my Mac and still find this sales figures. So I'll just go into spotlight and type in sales figures, and there it is, there's that sales figures document, which has now been moved internally into my brain, but Spotlight can still pick that up, and I can easily find that specific file. Um, the brain is a mini database, and there's a directory inside your underscore brain folder, each brain has one, 
with a files directory and all of your internal attachments simply reside there. So again, they're not renamed, not compressed, and even without the brain running, as you saw with Spotlight, I can still find that individual file that I may be looking for. Um, we can also bring into the brain web attachments as well. Now I'm going to use just basic web um, websites and I'll let Patrick expand a little bit more on uh, what the web capabilities mean with, with links in the brain. So here I've got, actually this is a link to a restaurant, but I really like the background. I think my client is going to like the background for their ad campaign. So I want to bring this in as a link into the brain to share with them to see if they like this kind of ominous um, animated background. So right here from my browser, I'm simply going to, and obviously I'm on Safari, I'm going to drag and drop from the uh, URL right into the brain, and it gives me a nice little shortcut to that uh, particular website. I can close that and refer back to it uh, from the See the World ad campaign at any time. Here's another website. I like the font on this particular website, so once again, I'm going to drag and drop right into the brain. Now notice that the brain will always try and pick up any of those custom favicons. So um, there I can mouse over and see the favicons for the website. Also another trick that I like to do within the brain is I like to utilize the label feature. So I'm really going to quickly label this is, I'm not really interested in taking my clients to this restaurant. I want them to see the home page of the website. So I'll just type in animated home page. And the brain has this nice little feature where I can switch the label for the actual um, uh, name of the website. So every website has a, a website name, and that shows up in the tool or the tab. So Collectivo Coffee Roasters of your browser. The brain uses that to name the website. But I'm going to flip-flop these. And notice now whatever the label is I've typed in, that's the new name of the website of the web page, animated home page, but I can mouse over and still see, oh, that came from this Mayemo restaurant. Uh, I'll leave Collectivo Coffee with whatever the title is, but change the label to nice, fun fonts. So once again, I can just simply mouse over that website and I get that nice little identification of, of what type of content that particular website has. So I don't have to launch all these websites looking for the animated home page. I can just read the thought names or mouse over while I'm sitting down with my client to, uh, uh, to actually find the website that I'm looking for. And uh, I do also want to talk about creating documents from scratch, but since we're on the subject of dragging and dropping web pages and bringing files and documents into the brain, there are some unique ways that Mac users like to store and access their different files. So I'm actually going to pass Presenter over to Patrick to share some very specific Mac-friendly features built right here into the brain. So Patrick, stand by while I send you Presenter. There you Great. go, Patrick. So so one of the things I like to do is keep my files in Dropbox, as I'm sure a lot of people do. And one great thing about uh, the brain is you can actually just link to these files and always have access to those Dropbox files on uh, this machine or any other machine or even on your uh, iOS or mobile or uh, Android devices that you're using the brain on. So one thing I can do is I can actually just drag and drop this into the brain and that'll create a link just like Matt did with the files on his local machine and then I'll have easy access to that file via the link here and you can see that's in my Dropbox folder here so any changes that I make to this file will also save directly back into Dropbox and I'll see those changes when I access the, the Dropbox file on any other machine. Another thing I can do is I can grab the share link if I right click on an attachment so I can Grab the, uh, copy the Dropbox link, right clicking on that, and copy the Dropbox link, and then I can just right click on my background. Oops, let me try that again here. Copy link, right click, and paste that web link. And now you'll see that I have a link directly to that web version of the document uh, that's in my Dropbox folder. And I can also do the same with other file uh, online file services like Google Drive, for example. I have the same structure here. Um, but you can also do the exact same thing. You can right-click, 
grab the share link and paste that uh, sh that share link into your brain as an attachment. And I don't have Google Drive installed on uh, this machine, but you can also do the same thing locally if you were to have the, the Google Drive uh, local folder installed. You would be able to do the same thing. I would be able to drag and drop those files into my brain or right click and grab the share link from here uh, and paste those into my brain. So another cool option um, that I have that's exclusive to Mac is uh, if you don't know you can you can highlight a file on a Mac and press the space bar to get a quick look of that document just quickly view it and then easily dismiss that you can also do that directly within the brain if you right click on the attachment you can choose the quick look option and you'll see I have that exact same uh, quick look that I do when I'm looking at the file in Finder and then I can just click away or click the X to dismiss that and go to the next uh, file and, and quick look that one. It makes it very easy to preview those files rather than having to open them when I'm viewing a lot of files in my brain that makes it a little more quicker to use that uh, using that feature that's built into the Mac. Great and Patrick I, I saw the question come in actually while you were linking to um, to something within Dropbox about uh, giving people access. Now we're going to talk about giving people access to your brain, making your brain publicly accessible or just sharing your brain with other users. But what if that particular file that you're linking to in your brain is not shared from Dropbox? In other words, it's secure on Dropbox, but you want a link that you can get to from your brain and you end up sharing your brain. Right, and that's one of the great uh, benefits of linking to just the Dropbox link of the document. Uh, if you were to share this brain with uh, someone else and you don't want them to have access to that document, they'll, they'll still see the link, but when they click on that, I mean, the same securities are there uh, that you would have with your regular Dropbox account. So they won't be able to access this document via the Dropbox link unless they know your login credentials of course but great 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 and I've got a few more uh, features to share with you as far as adding attachments and then we'll start talking about uh, how we get our brains onto our mobile devices our iPhones and iPads so Patrick I'm going to take presenter back and what I would like to share with you is actually simply creating a new document from scratch within the brain. Everything that we've shared with you so far were on existing documents. Patrick had existing content in his Dropbox directories. Um, I've had files that I've been dragging, dropping, or web pages. But you can also create new documents from scratch right within the brain. Um, so let's say I've got uh, under my see the world, I was going to start on my sales presentation script. So I've got a new script that I'll be presenting to, um, uh, to my client and this document simply doesn't exist yet. There's nothing for me to go out and um, um, drag and drop right into the brain. Now, of course, yes, I could launch Word. I could create the document, my, write out my script, I could save it onto my desktop, drag and drop it into the brain, etc. But there's a few extra steps there. What we can do is simply right click on this empty thought and select to add an attachment. Now notice on the Mac specifically, when you go to add an attachment, I changed my defaults here to um, to show you what Mac users will see for the very first time. And unfortunately, on the Mac, we were unable to pre-populate this list. So you'll need to click on templates and follow these on-screen instructions. And now, anything that you create uh, can be, uh, it could be a template with your company letterhead or a custom template all filled out and you just need to fill in the blanks, the client name and some dates and price codes, etc. So I'm going to open up this directory and this opens up my brain's temp templates directory. Anything I drag and drop to this location can now be utilized as a possible template. So I'm going to open up Word as well and create a new document and call this blank word 
doc. Now, obviously, I can just name it that, but I just want you to see that whatever you put into the template is going to show up on the template. So I should probably say, you know, from the desk of Matt Caton. Let's do that. From the desk of dot, dot, dot. So we'll save this. And we'll save this right on my desktop. And I'll save that as Word document. And now I will drag and drop this into that brain directory. So I can close this. I've created my blank document. Here's my brain templates list. And over here on my desktop is my Word document. So I'm going to drag that into this directory. And now my brain will always have this particular file as a template. So again, it can be customized. It can be whatever type of document you'd like, whether it's a dot doc or an Excel spreadsheet or um, whatever type of files you typically use. So I can right click on my thought, select to add an attachment, and there's my Word document. That's what I'll use for my new document. And it opens up with my from the desk of, and I can continue on. Welcome to the future of business. So this is just the start of my presentation that I'll be giving to my client. I can save that. And again, it doesn't ask where I want to save that document to. Yes, I do want to save. That is already saved internally in my brain. So anytime I add a new attachment from scratch within the brain, that document is going to be saved internally. And additionally, we can copy that document. Let's say I really like version one. That's fantastic. But I want to take this in a new direction. I can select this document, this sales presentation, and copy and paste down here on the Thought Tool tab. So I've got version control within the brain as well. So version one, version two, version three, et cetera. I can keep track of all of those right on this particular thought. So we've added some new thoughts within the brain, some new content. We can navigate by clicking through our brain. We can also do a search within the brain as well. And so really quickly, let's say I want to search for the word power. Now, first notice that you're presented whenever you do a search within the brain, uh, you are actually presented with the instant search results. So these are all the thoughts that contain the word power, and I can click on any one of those to go directly to that thought. But I can do a more extensive search. I'll type in power and click on the search button, and that will take me down to the search window. And the search window is actually searching through all of the file names, all of those, uh, if I created a label for a thought, it's going to be searching through the thought labels, as well as your individual notes. Each individual thought within the brain has its own unique notes, which we'll talk about in just a moment, as well as um, all of the file attachments. And let me just give this a little more screen real estate here. So you can see I can click on any one of these search results to go directly to that particular thought within the brain. Here are all of my internal attachments, so some web pages, some notes uh, that contain the word uh, power. I can click to go directly to those where power is appearing in that note. And then down below are all of my internal file attachments, so a local attachment in the brain. This is on a Word document, Amazon server, has the word power. And then finally, unique to the brain is that it's actually integrating with Spotlight to search through my address book, my iCal, and even emails. Down a little lower there are all my emails that contain the word power. And from here, I can actually open to preview that particular, this is Barbara Powers there in my contacts. Um, I can open or I can add that ad a link to that address book or that iCal event, what have you. So. Um, uh, a much more powerful search integrated into the Mac version of the brain. And the next step that I want to share with you here on my local brain before I actually take this over and put it out on the web and uh, access it from my mobile devices is that notes area that I talked about earlier. You know, the notes are probably my favorite feature of the entire brain application. So let's say for this reach out ad campaign, I'm setting up an Amazon server and I need to have a lot of information. I need the IP address, IP equals 
So I've got the IP address, I've got my password, and login, etc. So all of the important information about this particular server can be right here in my notes so I can reference it really quickly. I also like to use, and since today we're specifically talking about task management, I really, really love the checkboxes built right into the notes. So I can create a checkbox and create a task list that needs to be completed. I need to pay first month security. I need to, let's say I need to give someone else access, give Patrick access. And finally, one last component, I need to maybe sign a two-year contract. So just a couple of action items that need to take place while I'm setting up this, this Amazon server. And of course, when something is checked off, let's say, okay, I've already set it up so Patrick has access. Uh, I'm going to check that off the list. And another feature in the notes I like to utilize are the timestamps. So I'm actually going to timestamp when I gave Patrick access. So a week or a month or a year from now, I'm going to say, yeah, I gave you access back on October 13th. Maybe it was an annual pass. Um, so I can verify on 2017, sorry, my fault, your, your pass expired, and I'll reset your access, etc. So I timestamp things, and I really utilize those checkboxes. A feature that, unfortunately, I'm not going to get a lot of time to talk about today are thought types and tags. But I sometimes utilize those thought types and tags sort of in conjunction with my notes. If I've got unfinished action items in my notes, I'll create a tag. Uh, in this case, maybe it's, uh, I'm just going to say this is urgent and important. There's unfinished tasks that I need to address. That's an urgent, important item. You can see I have seven urgent and important items. So I can click to visualize all those. I've got a checklist I'm working on. I've got my Amazon server, um, ad campaigns, clients I need to call, radio campaigns, databases that need updating and upgrading. So these are all thoughts with action, incomplete action items that I've tagged as urgent and important. So I can get to those very, very quickly and easily with my thought tags. Um, thought types, really quickly, a thought type just simply tells you the classification of a thought. So I can see this Go West for Harley Davidson, that's a radio campaign versus on Time Warner, uh, Reach Out is an active project. Let's say my See the World is also an active project that I'm working on. I'll just set up that thought type as an active project. And I can run a report. So I'm going to refresh, run my report. This is, these are all the thoughts in my brain. There are a thousand thoughts in this brain, but I just want to see all of my thought types active projects. So I just recently created this active project thought type. There's not many. I've got a budget, web design I'm working on, and a couple of projects for Time Warner. But I can get to these thoughts very, very quickly and easily throughout my brain uh, by running and filtering that type of report. So now that we've added content to our thoughts and, and interconnected them within the brain, we've done all this locally. I'm now going to sync this brain to the cloud. So I click on sync, and you can set this up to automatically sync so it's constantly syncing in the background as you're, as you're utilizing the brain. And that gives you online access to your brain. So I can jump out to my website at thebrain.com. And when you're on the brain, you can simply click on log in on the upper right hand corner and log in to access all of your brains online. So accessing your brains online is a really, really great way to uh, um, also be able to retrieve your information when you're at a colleague's desk or you're visiting a client and they give you a kiosk with a set up with a computer. You can really quickly look up that demo script or that um, uh, conference line information that you saved in your brain. So now that I've synced this to my brain, notice I can even do a search here for my see the world. There it is. So I just created this thought today. There it is. See the world. I've got access to that animated homepage. Um, if I want to look at my sales presentation script, I can access this right from the web. There's those two different versions all available to me from the web. And 
from the web interface. I can continue on modifying the application. I can add new thoughts. Uh, notice I can edit the content, so add links, add a new checklist to this thought, whatever type of uh, additional information I want to include here in the online version of the brain. But most importantly, we talked about brains being uh, cross-platform compatible. So I built this particular brain on my Mac. I've synced it to the cloud. I can now sync this brain to other machines. So I can go home to my uh, Windows device and sync this brain and continue on accessing this brain from a Windows machine or from another Mac. So I'm keeping multiple machines in sync through the cloud. That's one of the benefits of syncing your brain online. But here is the other one, and that is with my iPhone. So I am going to log in and navigate over to my brain area. So let me actually bring up my... Uh, uh, so I can see what I'm doing here. So here's my uh, home page. I'm logging in to the Brain app. So you can download the Brain app from the App Store. Uh, there's also a link on our website uh, to get you directly to the, uh, the link on the App Store. Here's the Brain, and there, of course, is my eSolutions Brain that I just created. I'm sort of doing this uh, upside down and backwards. But there it is. It's loading up. So there's my eSolutions Brain. Uh, from my iPhone and notice down below I've got all these fantastic uh, different options so I can go directly into my notes and I can review the notes I think my camera is backwards so it looks a little strange through the camera uh, like a mirror but uh, uh, perfectly legible on the device but rotates nicely I can once again access all of my digital information from either my iPhone. I chose to, uh, to use my iPhone today. It looks exactly the same, but with a nicer, bigger interface on an, on an iPad. But also I can access my notes, file attachments, add new thoughts, and most importantly, I can do that search. And I can even pin and get to my different pins. So my shortcuts to my thoughts, there they are. And I can navigate to a specific pin within the brain. So there I can get right to that Time Warner thought. So once again, I can add new content, new notes, type them right into the brain. So I typically in meetings, um, I've, obviously I used to take uh, my laptop and um, from work, my, uh, my MacBook Pro, but now I just walk in with my iPhone, with my iPad, I'm taking notes right in my brain, creating action items and checklists for myself from the, from the uh, from the iOS interface. So a fantastic way to make your brains portable by syncing them to the cloud. In fact, you can potentially only have online brains and not keep a, a local version. That's certainly an option. There are more options on the desktop version. You saw I was able to do reports and easily set up thought types and tags. You can do those from the web application, but it's certainly, uh, you cannot do reports. Reports can only be run from the desktop app. Um, so the desktop app does have some more features, uh, but certainly everything I need to do is available to me from the, uh, uh, from the iOS application. And also for you Android users, I'll just throw this in there really quickly, uh, we have an Android option as well. So you can uh, download that from the Google Play Store. And once again, they're all um, cross-platform compatible. So the brain that I created here today on my Mac, I can put it online, access it from any type of web browser. I can access it from I, uh, iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. So it's not, I don't have to build a unique brain just to get to it from Android versus iOS. Um, so the last component that I wanted to share with you before I have a very special surprise to share um, is that I can also share my brain with other users. You can upgrade your account to Team Brain services. Team Brain allows you to sync your brain to the cloud uh, just as you would with your uh, uh, Pro Combo subscription. But I can go now into my settings for this brain. And uh, you may have noticed, maybe some of you picked up, that Patrick was actually working on the same brain that I was. He had a different wallpaper, uh, but he was working in the same brain, in the eSolutions brain. And that's because I've actually shared this brain, because I do have team brain, 
as an editor with Patrick. So I can type in the name of another person that's a member of my team. Uh, so I can share this with uh, Brigitte Sen, for example. I can send Brigitte an invitation uh, to that particular brain. If she's got team brain, I can make her an editor and she'll actually be able to edit and modify that brain uh, right from the web interface or download a copy and continue on making edits. And I can show you this here in the local version. If I just refresh my reports, you'll notice in this particular brain, I actually have the option, let me just make reports full screen here, um, of turning on modification detail and seeing who has modified, and I have shared this brain with Brigitte in the past, as you can see, uh, but I can see who has modified which particular thought and when. So if I start sharing this brain with Patrick, I'll be able to get to his changes, find out when he modified thoughts, etc. So a really, really great way to make your brain collaborative within a group environment by upgrading to that team brain. And of course, there's more information on team brain on our website at www.thebrain.com. And so with that, I think I've shared with you everything I want to about using the brain on your Mac. Um, as I said earlier, the similar similarities between the brain on a Mac running on a PC are very, very similar. There's just a couple of keystrokes from time to time that are a, a bit different. But I want to also share with you, and this is really exciting for me, just a sneak peek at something in development that is called the Brain 9. So the current version of the Brain that I've been using today is version 8. Um, this is the Brain 9. So the Brain 9 is something that is, uh, we're calling it, um, we have a first look preview available. So if you subscribe to Team Brain or if you are a current user of the Brain Pro Combo, um, then you can actually go to www.thebrain.com slash thebrain9 and download a copy and actually start utilizing the Brain 9 features. And, and, and uh, let me share a few of those with you right now. So I'm running the Brain 9 locally, and uh, this is my brain list. So things look a little bit differently, uh, much more user-friendly as far as the available brains that I have. So this is my brain list. I can click to open any one of these brains, and they open in a tab interface. So I can very easily jump between, here's my VW brain, so it's where I keep track of parts that I'm purchasing for my VW, a uh, little project of mine, and here's my eSolutions brain. And notice that we see in the brain tab the actual thought that you were on in that brain. The reason being is another tab, and I can quickly go into my eSolutions brain once again. So I've got the same brain open twice. In this brain, I'm going to go over into my org chart, and maybe I'm just sort of reviewing how my um, IT managers and, and uh, IT structure is, is handled in this area of my brain, but I've got the same brain open on another tab, and there I'm focused more on just a customer, so my Time Warner brain, and I can pull up all their documents and information. And given you have enough screen real estate, I can actually drag and drop a brain into a separate window. Um, so here I've got, again, the same brain open, but in two separate windows. So I've got a different area of the brain open uh, over to the right on uh, Time Warner, my org chart, and over on left, Time Warner, one of my most important customers. So a really wonderful tabbed interface. Many of the features of the Brain 9 are actually just the speed and stability uh, of the application. So a much smoother, richer interface. Uh, the design has been completely redone from the ground up so we can easily access many of the capabilities of the, the old Brain 8 um, with less clicks and uh, a more fluid interface. So here I can set up a thought tag or type very, very quickly. So let's say this is uh, Time Warner, but just out of our Chicago office. And once again, they're a top client. And I can even quickly modify and select the stock icon. So I'll give Time Warner, I want to go into, let's go into business and give Time Warner, they're a green light customer, so I just give them a nice little stock green light icon. And my thought tags, I have this tag as in Chicago as well as one of my favorite clients. Notice that only appears when I mouse over the thought. So I mouse over, I can see this is a client in Chicago 
and they're one of my personal favorite clients, or it's one of my favorite thoughts in this particular brain. So a lot of very, very smooth, subtle uh, interface changes. One last change that I'll share with you, I don't have time to go through the complete list of new features within the brain, uh, the brain nine, but also um, I'm viewing web content right here within the application, so I don't have to launch my uh, web page for this particular client in uh, another window or another location. It uh, appears right there to the right. Uh, my notes, if I have notes for Time Warner, would appear here as well. Um, but also, document preview. This I really like. So the actual Word document that's associated with this thought um, I get a nice little preview of that over here on the right. And that's the same for Windows users as well. So there's a little button where you can turn on Windows on and off the document preview. Um, I have my system right now set up so that it's, um, uh, by default, it's giving me that, uh, that document preview. So many, many new fantastic features available in the Brain 9. Uh, and some of the best are yet to come. But once again, let me share with you one last time that if you uh, log in, and I'm having some problems with my, uh, oh, there we go, just started working again with my uh, browser. Uh, if you log into the brain and go to www.thebrain.com forward slash the brain nine. And uh, there's a nice little video that you can watch about some of the additional features and see if you qualify to download and install the first look preview if you do and uh, agree to the terms um, you can go ahead and download the brain 9 for mac or or for pc and start playing around with the new technology and uh, and checking out all of the great new features that are coming your way with the brain 9. so with that patrick i'll send it back over to you to see if we have any additional questions that have come in uh, during the demo today i see we're coming up on the top of the hour, so I want to leave some time to ask any specific questions someone may have about using the brain on their Mac. Yes, we did have a couple of questions. It's kind of hard to top uh, top that after you're covering the brain nine. But, uh, <laughs> yes. So George had a question, uh, well, a couple of uh, related questions. So George wanted to know about the movement of the links, the link direction, and related to that, um, Sorry, I don't remember who asked this. There's lots of questions coming in. But uh, if you could also cover one-way links. Oh, well, sure. Um, sure. Someone mentioned that they were having trouble getting one-way links to work or possibly understanding how they work. OK, great. So let's talk a little bit about link direction and, and one-way links. That's not Mac-specific. Again, that's a feature that works on Macs or PCs. But it's a great, more advanced feature. You may have noticed when I was on Time Warner, I did this just to make uh, uh, one particular link stand out. If I hover over Time Warner, you can see Fred Baxter, and you see that nice animation. He, his lead account is Time Warner. So that clearly identifies Fred Baxter's lead account, Time Warner. I've got a, a nice directional link there. A one-way link is a little bit different. Um, let's uh, just grab another customer here. And let's say uh, Fred Baxter owns a Harley. So Fred has some great information about what it's like to be a Harley Davidson rider. And we want to refer back to him like, hey, would this you know, type of advertisement for this customer work? No, that's a little too fluffy. It needs to be more, more gritty and, and uh, you know, like being out on the open road with uh, bugs in your teeth or whatever. I don't own a Harley, so I don't know. But Fred knows. So I'm going to link Fred as a one-way link to Harley Davidson. So when I'm on the Harley Davidson, we're discussing their account, what kind of advertisements would they like? Fred is a great resource. Now, when I'm on the Fred Baxter thought, I don't need to know that he rides a Harley. I'm looking at what Fred's uh, workload is and which projects that he's working on and what he's responsible for. So that's a great example of when to use a one-way link. I'm going to link Harley Davidson up to Fred Baxter. There he is. And I'm going to click on the link between the two thoughts. Notice when I click on a link between two thoughts, it highlights that link. Everything else in the brain is grayed out. I'm focused on just that relationship between Fred Baxter and Harley. And of course, down in the notes, I can say, uh, you know, Fred has, ah, has owned a Harley for 30 years. 
loves to talk about it, great resource, etc. So all my notes about Fred and, and his relationship with Harley Davidson can be located there on my notes for the link because I have the link highlighted. Um, you can also notice whenever I have a link highlighted, the thought tool tab turns into a link tool tab. So that's really important to point out. Now, as soon as I click away from the link, I go back to Harley Davidson. That's the current active thought. So I'm seeing my note for Harley Davidson, my thought uh, tool tab for Harley Davidson. In other words, all the attachments for that thought, etc. It's just on the link. So I can highlight that link between the two. That's when I can modify the, the link properties. I can also just right click and edit the link. So I can say own day Harley. Um, so that's just the name that appears on the link. But I'm doing a little bit more specific setting up directional links. So I highlight it. And down below, there's a couple of features. When it's the clear sort of hollow zero, that means there's no directional content. But that's like a toggle switch. I can click, point Harley Davidson at Fred Baxter. No, that's not what I want. Point Fred Baxter at Harley Davidson. That is what I want. So I can see that Fred, and I can actually type in the label owns. So Fred owns a Harley. Um, and I'll also set up one-way link. So don't just go to highlight the link and check the one-way box because then you're automatically turning on one way and I'll show you what that does in a moment. Sometimes you just need a direction from left to right or right to left and you do that with this arrow, the toggle switch. But if I check one way, that link is only going to show up when you're coming in from one direction. It's a one-way link, so it shows up when I'm on, in this case, I want it to show up on the Harley Davidson thought, but not on the Fred Baxter thought. So I'm actually going to, uh, uh, I'm actually going to change this. And I won't say owns, um, I'll just say additional knowledge. So I've got some additional knowledge on Harley Davidson coming from, from Fred Baxter. So I've set up my one-way link thought in that direction. And the reason is now whenever I come down to, like I did, Harley Davidson, there I can see um, Fred Baxter has additional knowledge. That's important to me when I'm on the Harley Davidson thought. It's not important to me when I'm on the Fred Baxter thought. So here I am under account managers. And Fred Baxter is an account manager. So I'll click on Fred. And I can see all of the information that Fred is, that's important to Fred. He's the account lead for Time Warner. He's the working on the winning edge, that's a presentation, advisor on Red Cross. He's also an advisor on the rebuild of the bug database. What's missing? And that's his link over to Harley Davidson. I set it up as a one-way link, so I'm only going to see that thought when I come in from Harley Davidson. So I'm spending a little bit of time on this because it's a more advanced feature, but when you find the need for that one-way link, you only want to see it from one direction. Sometimes you want it to you know, guide you through a process. Step one is this, step two is this, step three is this. But if you go straight to step five or whatever, you don't see that you can back up to step four, step three, step two. Those are already done. So there's a lot of different scenarios when you might want to set up a one-way link. This is just one of them. There's, the link is not appearing, coming from the Fred Baxter thought. But once again, if I go to my gold level service clients, there's Harley Davidson. I've got some additional knowledge available over with Fred Baxter, and I can contact him for that information. So that's how you set up that one-way link. Just keep in mind you need to click on the link to highlight it, and then the, your thought tool tab becomes a link tool tab. And that's where you can modify, I can even modify color settings of the link. So we can make this the uh, red link with green dotted lights or, or what have you. So there's a lot of modifications you can do on those link settings. Great. Uh, and Roger had a question on uh, the context sensitive naming comma trick. Uh, if you could oh, great. cover how that works. Oh, sure, sure. So context sensitive naming is the, the sort of technical term that Patrick and I and, and those of us at the brain use for uh, what we affectionately call the comma trick. That's easier to remember. And the comma trick simply allows you to um, sort of pass a category down through, uh, through child thoughts or sub thoughts. So in other words, uh, let's say go west is a radio campaign. And uh, with every radio campaign, I have a series of scripts. So let's say I'm going to have dozens of radio campaigns. That means I'm going to have, 
hundreds of scripts for every every client. So I don't want to create a, you know, I do want to keep all of my scripts together because there's going to be a lot of information underneath Go West. So I'll create an area for my scripts, but I would use that name scripts over and over for different radio campaigns. So if I just said scripts and went to another radio campaign and made a placeholder for scripts, I've got the same thought name being used over and over again. So the comma trick really comes in handy. Instead, I'll say comma script. And notice that when the thought appears underneath Go West, it just appears as scripts. So the brain sort of cleans up the display for you. But the full thought name, context sensitive namings, these are my Go West scripts. And I can go to, let's say Harley has another radio campaign called Hit the Road. And they're gonna, that's a radio campaign as well. So I'll set up my thought type, and that is a radio campaign. And they're going to have a whole series of scripts for this radio campaign. But once again, comma, scripts. So these are my hit the road scripts. So notice right there, even in my past thought list, instead of just seeing a thought called scripts, I see my go west scripts or my hit the road scripts. So the context sensitive naming gives me more information about that particular thought. It's going to help me in my searches if I'm just searching for scripts. Um, there I do have a thought called script. I need to add the context sensitive naming to that thought. Uh, but here are my go west scripts and my hit the road scripts. So I can find the exact thought that I'm looking for. Now if you've already, uh, uh, so this is my reach out script. If you've already created the thought, you can go back in and modify the thought name, but you have to type it in manually. When you're creating the new thought from scratch, just add the comma, the brain will take care of the rest for you. But in this case, I need to call it my reach out uh, scripts. So now I've renamed that thought, and there under reach out are my scripts. So again, it gives me more information about that thought. Really, really helps in searches and running reports and just seeing thoughts named in your past thought list. And I typically only use that comma trick on very commonly used thought names, placeholders for client invoices, contracts, contacts, etc. And let me just share this with you, and I see that we're right on the hour, so uh, Patrick, unless there's any other pressing questions, this will be really, really great to share with you. Uh, just, I didn't have time to show you all of the features of uh, the Brain 9, but let's jump back in there one more time. Here I've got a reach out ad campaign, and let's say I use the comma trick so I say comma scripts, and once again, obviously, it names it reach out scripts, but let's say reach out ad campaign, we renamed the ad campaign, and so this ad campaign is renamed to uh, reach the world, and I'll hit enter. Oh, the brain has noticed that I have used the comma trick and reach out was found in one other related thought. Do I want to rename that also? Well, yes, I do. So I'll rename that. So it renames those context sensitive uh, names for me. And the brain eight, if you go back and rename the parent thought, uh, you have to manually go in and change all of the, uh, the child thoughts as well. So this is really just a, a fun, great feature. I use the comma trick quite a bit and this, uh, the brain telling me that my parent thought has been renamed. You can even rename the child thought, and it knows everything around that's where it's using the comma trick has been uh, renamed and, and will help you to readjust all those thought names for you. Great time saver in the Brain 9. Yes, that's one of my favorite new features in the Brain 9. <laughs> we have many, and that's just one of them. So great, I, I think that wraps. Yeah, go ahead. Were there any other questions? I was Patrick? just going to say, uh, related to the Brain 9, also please uh, do join us on our forums, forums.thebrain.com. Mm -hmm. We have an entire section dedicated to the Brain 9. If you find any bugs, have any feature requests, or just want to discuss a feature, how it works, or anything, we can discuss that on our forums. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, that's forums.thebrain.com. So we're happy to hear from you there if you're using the Brain 9, or even if you're using the Brain 8 and you want to share uh, some feedback or ask questions or just talk with other people in the Brain community. There's a lot to do there in the forums. So I think with that, that's everything we wanted to cover today uh, for using the Brain on your Mac for big picture organization and task management. 
Uh, there are certainly many, many more features of the brain, and you can um, learn about them on our website. We've got some great tutorials and uh, help section in our support area of our website. And you can also join us every Friday on the Brain 101, just because we host from time to time on, most of the time probably on Windows, but from time to time on Mac as well. Uh, but uh, helpful information is happening there as well. Join us at, at any time. So with that, everyone, thank you again for joining us. Glad we were able to share. This is the first time we've actually publicly shared a, a look at uh, the Brain 9. So thank you for joining us for, for that event. And enjoy the rest of your week. And most importantly, enjoy your brain. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.